they were lovers. You loved the video. Don't be looking all weird at me. You liked the, the last video? Yeah. Yeah, I sure did. Except for what? <laughs> Shut up. Except for what, Paul? The end? <laughs> what do you mean the end? What was wrong there? Huh? Hey, Paul, come back here, man. Yeah, Tony got some good film. He got good stuff. You get a lot done today because you used my power hammer. Your power hammer? Yeah, my air hammer. Oh, is that yours? Yep. Looked like mine. No, it's not yours. It looked just like mine. Yours doesn't have a quick release chuck. Quick mine. release. No, yeah. That's uh Yeah, that's definitely mine, I think. <laughs> uh, Vince noted that damage. Uh, right here. But I told him it doesn't really matter, I guess, because y'all are like masters, so. Yes, we are. It ain't gonna be more messed up than uh, well, dang. how Look. they already come in. Yep, this piece is ruined. It's got a bent piece right there. No, it, it'll do good. What do you think about this though? That's nuts. It is, right? Yeah. Like nothing left of the car. There ain't. Let's get up here. Mm -hmm. That's it. The yeah, trunk. look at it from here. How much the roof skin has to come off? Roof skin's gonna stay. Ah? Yeah. You just need to. Tweak it so it's. Yep. Ooh. Yep, gotta tweak it. Okay, so the body damage on this side was making that roof skin up or down or something, right? Right. So by the time that all of this is cut out in this car, I mean, everything that's gonna come out, there's still more in this car left original and factory than there was on that yellow car. That yellow, yellow oh, Cuda. The skeleton you showed them out there. That you guys are putting the. No, no, the one you guys are putting the Hemi in right now. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys that. And check this out. Yeah, that's actually one that you could not put in on the K member. Yeah, you can't put them in from the bottom. Who's doing that music out there? There you go. Look, that's how much room is left in there. Not much. Nope. Couldn't even fit a big finger in there. But. Tell you what, man, that's gonna look pretty good when it's all done. And then we're gonna go over to Tony. And see, he's got this rocker panel on now. Things come along. You can see it's starting to take shape. Got the rocker panel, and then he'll end up putting the uh, the A pillar in. And once all that's done, it's set to go. Look how I mean, that's how far in you gotta go and cut all this crap out just to get a new rocker panel in. This piece is gonna have to re be replaced. Yes, even even little things like this. All redone. Cause that's supposed to be a circle, not a three quarter of a circle, but. So this is the piece of floor that Tony removed. And none of this is supposed to look like that. <laughs> this is actually supposed to be a straight piece of metal. You can see how jacked it is. And all of this is just mangled. Whatever this thing hit, it hit it really hard. See that? That's where it was. So there's a torsion bar, which is your suspension, your, your spring, if you wanna. It's not a spring, it's a bar that twists that, it's, it's like a spring. So it's connected to the K-frame, which holds the engine, and when it hit, it pushed it back and broke everything to pieces. Boy, this side got bad. So Tony's cutting this apart. This is what's underneath. Just some nasty stuff. And this piece, the rocker panel is supposed to extend all the way back and it's completely rotted out. So we got some other cars. Out back, we're gonna take some parts on or off of that side together though. It's looking good, Tony. Thanks, boss. Check this out. It is coming along. It's looking good. So Tony actually had all of this together with the uh, the cowl, the the inner cowl, and the upper and lower. Looked pretty good, and everything was ready to go together. Tony's got it. Mocked up. Man, he did. He did some serious work. Except on that side, it was um, completely rotted out when the paint came off. Normally, we have these cars sandblasted first, and then they come in 
and we already know where all the problem areas are, but on this car, that wasn't the case. We had to jump on this thing real fast. So, so the parts we took off, one is that car, what used to be a car. So that was a 1970 TA 346 pack Challenger. But there's no tags, no fender tags, nothing. No idea where all of it ended up. So it's worthless. And then this is the original car that Tony's working on now. But there was nothing left of this one because this car had been cut in half. You can see the weld right there. It had been cut in half and hacked together and there's actually three cars in this one car. You can see that. It's a cap on that frame rail because there's no frame rail underneath it. There's still some good stuff on here. Like all these cars, you know, we'll cut this out and save things here and there. But, I mean, you can see this whole car was just pieced together by... I mean, look at this. The floors aren't even connected. So, Tony's going to come in here. He needs these seat mounts right here, these seat brackets. And then we're going to save this rear frame rail and maybe, well, oh, that's it. I got my old truck back. I'll be doing a video on this. This is a 1978 Plymouth, uh, Plymouth trail duster. So this is a big block 440 truck, original 440 truck, full top convertible. The entire top comes off all the way from the front windshield all the way back but then someone had cut it a long time ago and made it a kind of a truck looking thing this actually opens up still i just took the interior out because it's been completely trashed um, it's just been sitting a long time. There you go. Crazy part is too, is when you take the top off, the uh, window frame stays. I don't like that, but. So, like I said, this is Plymouth's version of the Ram Charger. I've had this truck for a long, long time. Sold it, then got it back. It's an original motor. And there's a 440 stamping somewhere on the frame over here on this side. It's got a little Dana, maybe 44 in the front. Those leaf springs are pretty much shot. They're like completely flat, even going backwards a little bit, but Everything's here. We're gonna make it a running and driving truck again. So in the booth, he's getting ready to do a clear coat on the deck lid, the end caps. Right there. The other fender and the hood. The hood's getting ready to be cleared. And then we'll do the clear once and then wet sand it, come back, put the insert on and then clear it again and the front valence which doesn't exist on road runners but on this one it does so that's where the turn signal goes for the front and then we'll end it with some uh, honeycomb black screen in here All right, day three. No, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got the uh, the car painted, that purple car that was in the booth, the 70 runner. It is shot. So it's this real nice purple color that the client wanted. 
So you can see, yeah, it looks pretty good. Came out real nice. So this this is uh, gonna get sanded and reshot, clear it again, so that uh, we can get that clear looking real deep. So engine compartment is matte clear coat. This is all uh, glazerit. This is what we're using for the clear. And so you can see, came out real nice. Real clean, good stuff. So on the back, what we're doing is this will all be a black tail panel. So everything within this section here goes black and then we'll have some uh, Roadrunner um, stenciling going on in here. And then this is our gas cap for this car. From the factory, it's behind the license plate but had to change all that stuff out. Looking pretty good. What are you doing on this, Paul? Uh, hydro boost. Ooh, hydro hydro boost. boost for the brakes. And the, we got to route the lines to the reservoir and pump, and also down to the rack and pinion. And that setup looks good. It does. We've got a little issue. Um, the return line from the pump to the uh, oil sump or oil pan is right down here and as you can see if I put my power steering lines on there it's going to interfere with this big old number 12 hose I got yeah. going across there so just solving problems brother you can see it very little room in here yeah got some nice uh, powder coated headers oh yeah those That's are good right. those look really good look at the size of those primaries I oh, know they're huge <laughs> God. That's a big ass piece. Yeah, we got the axle coming. So we can finish the finish the suspension on the rear and then we can get it off the jack stands, put on some wheels, and uh, just continue forward. Yep. Getting the chrome on? Yep. That's gonna look yeah, good. The other side is almost complete. Oh yeah, it does. Something about that yellow, black, and chrome. Yellow, black, and chrome. You can't go wrong there. with that combination. No. No. Headliner? Yep. It's looking good. Sail panels are put in. Yeah, it looks really good. And on the chopped Canadian charger, we put the dash in so we can uh, get it going. It's got aftermarket gauges inside the cluster. We're not going to use that bezel in there or anything, but this is a telescopic steering column. It goes forward and back, up and down. And that shifter looks huge in this car. Probably gonna put a shorter shifter in that. So one quick, really cool little thing that we got. Brent here from Fiber Solutions. He uh, is doing the grill for that, the uh, chop charger. So this thing's a 3D printed grill. And the reason why we, um, we're doing a 3D printed grill is because this car being sectioned two inches, so all you know there was two inches of metal taken out of taken out of the whole side of the car all the way around. It also extends into the grill, so the grill is two inches shorter also. So I'm gonna show you. <laughs> that is a factory grill section. That used to sit right here so you can see the difference there yeah here and Brent's gonna hold it for us you can see that that piece used to fit in there before this thing got sectioned out and now the new piece is here and this is the difference that's the difference how do you do this anyways so we actually took um, all those aftermarket OER grill pieces and scanned them so they're all in the computer and then we have to reverse engineer, rebuild it all, but then we can take right two inches out of the middle of it and put it all back together. And uh, there's a couple little brackets and stuff that kind of be moved around on the, for mounting and stuff, but and then we 3D print it all out. Well, look how accurate this thing is. It's even got the tabs on the side, these here, and these. 
these little tabs there, they sit inside this little pocket and cover the gap going down there so you don't see daylight. But even the, the center, the center piece there, it's amazing. So this is a, is this a mock-up grill, right? Yeah. So this is a mock-up piece and the other one will end up coming pretty soon. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> Go. Looks like it's half the size. <laughs> yeah. So now we can finally fit a grill into this car. Look at this size. That is craziness. Just thought I'd show you all that. That gray car we have, this is actually the Hellcat grill for that. Yeah, man, it looks good. Cool. Thanks a lot. Good yeah, job. No problem.